Have you ever experienced the horrific shame of finally getting the woman you've been crushing on for a while into bed only for you to climax in a matter of seconds? Then that's shortly followed by a lack of eye contact. You can't make eye contact with her. You're trying to excuse yourself. You're trying to say that it doesn't normally happen. You don't know what to do and you just want to escape and hide and maybe die. Or maybe you just avoid sexual contact altogether because you're more afraid of letting her down than of getting your own needs met. Today, I want to talk about a problem that affects so many men. And unfortunately, most men just don't talk about it, especially to each other. I'm in a privileged position where men are often willing to open up and talk to me about it. But usually most guys just suffer in silence and think they're one of the few who suffer with this. And most men do just fine. Now today, I'm going to talk about some strategies that actually cure premature ejaculation for good, ones that I've seen work consistently over and over again. But more importantly today, I'm going to focus on what are some strategies you can employ? What can you do right now, even if you suffer with a premature ejaculation, so that you can still hook up with girls and still have them walk away feeling like you're amazing in bed, even though you haven't quite solved this problem yet? Yes, it's possible, and today I'm going to explain how. But more exciting than that even is I'm going to share with you my mystery box technique, which is a strategy that really heightens a woman's sexual arousal and gets her so excited that when you do this with women, more often than not, they're going to want to tell all their friends about it in a positive light. So stay tuned for that towards the end. As I said in the introduction to this video, I am going to start by talking about the cures, the things that I've seen actually work uh, to, to, to dramatically reduce or abolish altogether premature ejaculation for guys. So the first of these that I've seen work with my clients has been either desensitizing condoms or desensitizing creams. And what these creams essentially do is they reduce the sensation in your penis um, and they really help guys a lot. Um, the condoms have seemed to be really popular with a number of my clients. Um, now you could argue, yeah, but sex is going to be less fun, um, to which the answer is, well, you're already hypersensitized as it is. The guys generally don't say, oh, it makes sex boring. They've, they've never reported any of that. Yes, it reduces the sensation, but they've, they've been really pleased that they're able to actually go and have sex and do all this fun stuff without worrying so much about coming too quickly. But of course, this isn't a permanent solution. You don't really want to be hooked on having to use desensitizing condoms or creams for the rest of your life. What else can you do? The second thing that works really, really well is tantric breathing practices. So tantra at its core is not really about the sexual positions, as, as many of you maybe think when it comes to tantra. Tantra is more about a breathing process and actually connecting with other people through breathing and a bunch of other things. But a part of Tantra is actually learning to manage your energy or where your energy flows in your body. And when I say energy, I really mean more, let's get scientific, where your attention flows in your body. So it, it's using breathing to move your attention around your body in a way that can that effectively shifts your focus around away from your erogenous zones or away and then back and then way in and back as you breathe. And it's a really fantastic exercise that, that helps a lot and really can cure um, uh, premature ejaculation. The problem is that a lot of men don't realize premature ejaculation isn't just you're thinking like, oh, I get super excited about sex. Um, we have a sympathetic and a parasympathetic nervous system. That is, in our bodies, we've kind of got two uh, chemical systems, one that revs us up and gets us excited, and the other one that calms us down and relaxes us. Now, for a man to climax, for a woman too, but it's a different system for a woman, but for a man to climax requires a bit of an interplay between these two systems. Now, a lot of men who have trouble with premature ejaculation have this problem because there is uh, the way there too the sympathetic parasympathetic nervous systems uh, work together uh, can can create a little bit of chaos that's why actually for men who take antidepressants sometimes they're able to get aroused but they really struggle to ejaculate because uh, or on on cocaine and another drug because that messes with the the these two systems right that's why that actually happens so tantric breathing breathing in a certain way also regulates these systems that's another reason why that works so well the third strategy that really works well is simply just desensitization through 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 rap, through regular practice. And so what is this? This is simply a matter of in your own time, you could do it with a partner too, but practicing masturbating, for example, and every time you get close to 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 climax, slow down or stop and, and, and get as close as you can, but pull back, get as close as you can and pull back, get as close as you can and pull back and keep going and going and going until you get better and better and better at getting close, but never going over the edge. And the strategy works as well. Now, 
The last two strategies, these are long-term solutions, but they're also long-term they require practice, like regular practice to actually work. You're not going to learn tantric breathing or desensitization and, and literally just be cured overnight. It's going to take weeks and weeks and weeks of doing this to reach a point where you, you're no longer suffering with premature ejaculation. So these are long-term solutions that take long-term to fix, but once they're done, they're done. You don't have to worry about it anymore. And now, I don't think I've ever had a client who's worked at one of these last two strategies and not gotten results. So... I work with thousands of clients um, and yeah, it, it, this comes up a lot. So they do work. Now, in the meantime, while you're trying to get this problem sorted, I wanna talk to you about how you can still be amazing in the bedroom and why there's a bit of a misconception about what makes sex great. So if you, I don't know if you've ever read a romantic novel, like a, like a women's erotic fiction novel, you probably haven't, but maybe you've read Fifty Shades of Grey. But something that's interesting from if you ever read any of these novels because they're targeted at women, what women want sexually, they never talk about how long he lasts in bed, right? You're never going to see a, a, a romance novel talking about how he, he did his, uh, he lasted for 22.3 minutes and he thrust her at a pace of exactly 13 thrusts per 30 seconds and he uh, did the patented hip twist thrust method TM, uh, and then she climaxed, and that's how it was. That's not... You'll never see how long he lasts in a romantic novel. You'll never see amazing specific techniques, usually, uh, that he used. That doesn't come up, and that's important to note, because, well, yes, I agree that these romance novels are assuming that the women assume that he's not, like, climaxing in five seconds. They're not really focused on how long you're lasting. That's not the focus. That's not what's turning women on when they're thinking of being with a man. What they're thinking about is something entirely different. They're thinking about how sexy she feels in that moment when she's around him. They're thinking about how he is teasing her body and getting her worked up into a lather mentally, emotionally. You know, they're thinking about how he uses her senses and everything that's going on and heightens the arousal to a peak till she just... She, begging to be able to climax herself, right? Just thinking about that journey, that experience is what is talked about, right? It's more the set and setting even, almost, than the actual penetration itself. And I think that there's a lot to take away from understanding this because too many guys focus on the penetrative part of sex and they focus on the shame they have around climax. And so the, the story that you hear often with men who have premature ejaculation is they go to have sex with this girl, they start having sex, they realize they're going to climax, they climax, they have less shame, oh, I, I, um, it doesn't usually happen, I'm sorry, I, uh, this is awkward, I, I'm um, putting on pants, trying to get away, I, yeah, um, it was nice to talk to you, we'll, we'll have to talk, you know, this whole thing. That's unsexy, and that's going to leave women feeling not just dissatisfied, but feeling like you're a selfish brick and a bit of a child and all these other things you don't want her to feel about you. But that's not specifically because of the premature ejaculation. That's because you handled it. You didn't handle it like a man in charge of his own body. And so what do I mean, and this is really sexy, is that if you know that you've got premature ejaculation, you've got to take charge of that. And what I mean by that is when you know that you're going to climax really easily, don't let that happen, right? So, you know, it's happened to me. I don't really have premature ejaculation so badly anymore. I, I did as a younger guy a little bit. Um, but sometimes still today, if I get really excited, if things escalate super quickly, I don't know if I'm in the right mood or the right headspace, whatever it is, now and again, I'll be like, oh crap, <laughs> I'm getting way too excited way too quickly here. Now, what I don't do is just orgasm and like get all awkward about it. What I do is pull back. I'll stop and I'll, I'll say to her, I'll take charge. I'll say, whoa, 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 okay. I'm getting a little too excited too quickly here. Let's just slow this down a little bit. And what I'll do instead is I'll start to, I'll go down on her, I'll start going down on her, I'll start stimulating her like digitally, right? I'll start doing other things to keep the arousal level high while at the same time giving myself, my hormone levels, my body a chance to uh, settle down, uh, a chance to recalibrate, which oftentimes is what a lot of guys need who have premature ejaculation anyway. Just a little bit of time to chill and calm down after the initial excitement is sometimes enough to give him a head start and get, get back into the ring. So yeah, doing these things are really important, but what guys often don't realize is for a lot of women, it, they can, a lot of women can orgasm more easily from oral stimulation or digital stimulation, from, from something like that, from clitoral st stimulation, than from like penetration. So if your primary goal is to make her have fun and get, get her to reach climax, that's gonna be easier than from actual sex itself. 
And from a woman's vantage point, yes, women like penetration, like the feeling of having the man inside them, that whole experience. But so long as you're taking charge and saying, all right, going down or doing these things to get her, to get her turned on. And remember, not every woman is able to climax, especially with a new guy. Um, but, you know, it varies between women. But so long as you're taking charge and, and saying, you know what, your pleasure is also something I'm going to look after here. That's a really big thing. And I think that, I mean, I've never had this kind of experience with a woman where I get overexcited and pull back and stop and still take charge of her needs and, you know, try to have sex again and sl may slowly get back into it, you know, and try to control myself. I've never had that experience. As long as I look after her, I'm not acting shameful and weird and awkward about it, but making sure this is still a fun sexual experience. When I do that, I don't have women get upset or I've never had women not want to see me again, oddly enough. I mean, I say oddly enough because so many guys think, well, if I've got this problem, women just aren't going to want to sleep with me. If you do these things to look after her at the same time, women are generally pretty forgiving. And and yes, there will there can be exceptions. I'm sure there are exceptions out there in the world, but not not as many as you think there ought to be. And more importantly than even that, there are things you can do to create an incredibly an incredibly sexual, sexy experience for a woman that don't involve you being inside her at all. You just need to know how to play her body. And I mean play her body in a positive way, not in a negative manipulative way. And to play her imagination and to play her hormones along with her body, right? In a way that's just going to get her so excited. And I want to share with you a technique that it's just, it's a technique I've been using for over a decade now. Um, in fact, two decades? No, not quite two decades. <laughs> 15 years, maybe. Uh, and it's so fantastic. Women love it. And it's a lot of fun. So it's called the box technique. I promised this in the intro and I'm finally going to talk to you about it now. The box technique works like this. You ideally don't do it on the first time you're going to have sex with a woman because she has to have a little bit of trust for you, right? You can do it the first time you guys are going to sleep together, but I generally advise it to do it on the second or third time. And what you do is you show up on a date and you have this little box with you. I, I used to use a little toolbox. Now I use a little lunchbox, but I prefer something that's metal. And I'll tell you why in a second, because what's going to be inside this box is... You're going to have a bunch of things in here, and I'm going to tell you what they are later, but she's not going to know what they are. And so what I do is I show up on the date, might go to a cafe, a restaurant, or whatever, uh, or a bar, and what I do is I put this box down on the table with us, and I put it down and go clink <laughs> on the table. I just going to say, oh, what's in there? And I'm going to say, I can't tell you yet. And she's going to look at me, and she's going she's to have a little bit of fear, but a little bit of like curiosity, like, what do you mean you can't tell me yet? Well, this, what's in this box is for you, but... It's not for you now. It's for you later on. Kind of give her that look, right? Later on. And she said, no, what's in the box? Tell me. I was like, I can't tell you. This is like, this is a this is a very, you know, it's a surprise. It's a special thing, you know? Don't worry about it. And usually as I say that, I'll kind of push the box away from her. And as I do that, I'll make sure it makes a bit of a noise of what's inside, right? So she's like, oh, what do those noises mean? What, what is inside that box? Now, the reason I'm doing this, again, is because what I want to do is create anticipation. Sexual anticipation, right? The feeling of something's going to happen. I don't know what it is. Um, you're creating a sense of uh, fear, but not the wrong kind of fear. Kind of the, the trepidation, right? Oh, like this is going to be, I don't know. Like, oh, I, I, right. That whole experience you want to create in your head. Now, you do that because over the whole dinner now, she's imagining what's happening. She's creating these stories in her head. She is thinking about what's going to happen later on constantly because that box is there reminding her, right? So this is the beginning of creating really super heightened arousal in a woman so we have the date and then we go back to my place or her place whichever place we go to and then i'll say to her, ah it's time for the box right now she's like what's in the box I'm like you're not going to see what's in the box but here's what we're going to do and so what i do is i take things one out at a time so first thing i take out of the box are some handcuffs and i take out the handcuffs and by the way i always use safety handcuffs and i let her know the safety handcuffs um, because early on she doesn't have 100% trust, right? So what I do is these are safety, meaning they have a little button. They don't require a key to open, and I'll show her that she can get out of them herself. But I'll get the handcuffs, and I'll put them on her and handcuff her to the bed. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a blindfold, and I'm going to take the blindfold, and I'm going to put it on her. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the next item. And the next item is going to be a set of headphones or earplugs. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug them into my phone, I'm going to put them in the ears, and I'm going to put some music on, something sexy, something sensual, something chill, not too like hyper-techno or anything like that. 
Uh, and I'm gonna put those into her ears. Now, the reason I'm doing all this, first of all, and if she asks me why, I'm gonna explain to her, is because I want to, I want to hone all of her senses on her senses of touch and smell. I want all her attention to be on just what she can feel and smell in her body. And so I want to lock off the primary senses, which is sight and sound, because they're going to distract her. They're going to take away from the heightened sensual experience that's about to occur. And so I put these earphones on her, and now at this point she's getting aroused. She's getting like, what is going to happen? My body is like exposed. I don't know what's going to happen here. And so what I'll do, by the way, usually at this point I'll have her in a state of semi-undress. Maybe not fully naked, maybe in underwear at this point. So we've already been making out and this kind of thing by the time I bring out the box. And so now what I'm going to do, now what I might do is I might just gently kiss her on the neck, just a little bit. I might kiss her right on the tummy. She's not going to know where the kisses are coming from. That's the thing too, right? So the even a little bit of physical sensation is like, ooh, like it's a jolt to the body. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take objects out of the, the box. So the first object I might take out might be a feather, something soft. What I'll do is I will gently caress that feather down a part of her body, maybe down the side here, maybe across the neck, down across the top of the chest, right? So I'm going to just start to use different materials. I might have some silk, a little bit of a, sil uh, a silk handkerchief in there, things like this to create physical sensations on her body. I might have in this box, I'll have, uh, now by the way, you can use like things like ice and candle wax, but mm, anything that might hurt like candle wax, you really need to have a conversation beforehand, but ice is great if I'm at her house, I'll grab some ice and I'll run the ice down her body, right? Something cold to the touch. In this box as well, maybe things, I'll have things like I'll have some chocolate or a strawberry. So what I can do is I can take this thing and I can w waft it under her nose, right? So she can smell it and then I'll rub it along her lips. And if she tries to bite the strawberry or the chocolate, I'll pull it away. And then I'll lift the earphones and I'll say, not yet. I'll put the earphones back on and I'll waft it under her nose again over her lips. And then I'll hold it at her lips. And if she doesn't take a bite, I'll lift up the headphones and I'll say, have a bite. And she'll bite it, right? And then we create the taste sensations that she's feeling. And remember, it's a strawberry is not sexually aroused an arousal thing until all our attention is our attention, uh, 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 sense of taste and our sense of uh, smell and sensation, right? We're creating this sensation for her and then I'll do the same thing with the chocolate, the tastes, the feelings. And now what I'll do is I'll start to be more physical with her body. I'll start to kiss her gently on the neck, maybe a little bit of a bite. And I kiss her a little bit more and then maybe a little bit of a bite on her tummy, right? Not enough that she's in serious pain, but just enough that she feels she's getting a bit of a nibble. Right, and so I'm starting to play with her body more and more, and by this point, you're going to find she is seriously aroused. She's going to be breathing more heavily. She's going to be making little sighs, little noises, because now you've got her hormone levels, her body, her, her imagination just in the place you want it. And now, only now, after like 5, 10, 15 minutes of playing with her body, you'll st start to sort of focus on the more originous zones, her nipples, right? Like lick them, like play with her breasts, do these kind of things gently. Right, that she starts to get more and more aroused. And at this point, maybe I'll start to go down and slowly, gently work my way slowly into it. Now, the reason I say gently, slowly, all these things is well, I want to whip her up into such an emotional lather that she's craving, craving that release, that sexual release. Now, this process, this box example, is very graphic, and I hope you can see this whole thing playing out in your head. But for a woman, this is this for most women, this is really, really sexy. Now, occasionally you can get a woman who will just be really uncomfortable being handcuffed, even though they're safety handcuffs or, or blindfolded, all this kind of stuff. If she is, suggest, okay, would you feel comfortable holding your hands behind your head, right? You know, you be adaptable because, again, you don't want to make her actually frightened. You don't want to put her in a position where she's actually freaking out or anything like that. That'll ruin the moment. You need to adapt with what her comfort zones are. But for most women are okay with this if they can get out, all this kind of stuff. Uh, and that will make her feel like you are an incredible lover. That will make her feel like, holy crap, this was a hell of an experience I just had. And you didn't have to do anything with your penis, <laughs> right, to, to create this impact. You may have sex after this, right? She may, have, she may have orgasmed from you going down her and then you have sex with her and that's fine even if you come too quickly. Who cares? You created this amazing experience for her, right? So there are things, and this isn't the only... Uh, this isn't the only strategy, this isn't the only thing that you can do that really plays a woman's mind and really gets her aroused. But you can see there's a lot that you can do. And she would tell all her friends about it. Oh my god, I had the most intense experience last night. 
She will want to brag about you to her friends. And this is this is the thing that you want to create. This is the thing that so many men dream of. But it doesn't even have to involve penetration. You know, many lesbians don't have penetrative forms of sex either, right? Some do, plenty do, some of the time, but it's not necessary. And so, yeah, I just want to make you aware, even if you have premature ejaculation right now, you can create an incredible sexual experience for a woman. You don't have to feel shame. Sure, you should work on it, fix it. You want to be able to enjoy sex, right? But it's not a thing that you can't operate with women now and just learn to work with it. So that's been my input on, on guys with premature ejaculation. If you fall into this situation, uh, it is completely curable, as I said before. It's something you can solve, you just need to put in the work. Are you going to try the box method? If you are, if you've used it before, because I've talked about it many years ago in some of my videos, tell me, how has it gone? How did it go when you do it? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. As always, guys, if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I reckon if you liked it too, you might just like some of my others, so go ahead and check them out off to the side here. As always, guys, take care, stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you in my future videos.